Albuterol is a direct beta-2 agonist. It is also well known with another generic name, salbutamol. It is a bronchodilator used in the treatment of bronchospasm associated with asthma or COPD. Albuterol is available in different dosage forms, including meter dose inhalers. It is well known by its brand names, Provental, Ventolin, and Proair. Albuterol can affect your heart, and it may lower potassium levels in the body. It should be used carefully in people with heart disease. This video covers all such important points about this medication. First, let's see how does it work. Albuterol is a direct agonist on the beta-2 adrenergic receptors. These beta-2 receptors are located on the bronchial smooth muscle. When albuterol is given by the inhalation route, it mainly acts on the bronchial smooth muscle, activating these beta-2 receptors. When these receptors are activated, they stimulate the adenylyl cyclase system, which increases the intracellular cyclic amp levels. This produces a relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscle and improves the airflow. It can also reduce the accumulation of the mucus. However, albuterol can also act on the beta-1 receptors, which are located mainly on the heart. Therefore, overuse of this medication can produce a stimulant activity on your heart, leading to an increase in the number of contractions. Now, let's see the precautions to be taken while using this medication. Albuterol can produce dilation of your bronchioles, and it can reduce the symptoms of asthma. However, paradoxically, this medication can also produce bronchospasm. Therefore, after using the albuterol, if you observe enhancement of asthmatic symptoms instead of their relief, it may indicate paradoxical bronchospasm. When it is used for children, a face mask should be used in order to avoid deposition in the throat and for easy inhalation. Excessive use of albuterol may be fatal. Therefore, never exceed the recommended dose. Using the albuterol at higher doses can produce serious adverse effects on the heart. In people with reduced ejection fraction, albuterol can produce further deterioration. This may result in an increased risk of heart failure and may require hospitalization. Therefore, in people with reduced ejection fraction, this medication should be carefully used. Albuterol is a beta-2 agonist. That means it acts as a bronchodilator, and it can produce immediate bronchodilation. However, alone it may not be adequate to control the asthma. Asthma is a condition of bronchospasm with underlying airway inflammation. Without treating the inflammation, using the albuterol frequently may not reduce the number of asthmatic attacks. Therefore, you should use an anti-inflammatory agent like corticosteroids to correct the condition. Albuterol can be combined with ipratropium for the treatment of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It is a bronchial disorder that shows difficulty breathing. It produces shortness of breath, cough, wheezing, and chest tightness. In such conditions, a simple bronchodilator like albuterol may not be sufficient to produce significant bronchodilation. Therefore, a combination of the drugs can be used. Normally, acetylcholine is a mediator in the parasympathetic system that produces bronchoconstriction by activating muscarinic receptors. Ipertropium is an anticholinergic agent that produces relaxation of the airway smooth muscles. This produces bronchodilation. Albuterol acts in a different way. It acts as a short-acting beta agonist. By activating the beta-2 adrenergic receptors, it produces relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscles. This directly produces bronchodilation and increases the airflow. Therefore, this combination can produce a significant bronchodilation and improve the symptoms in people with COPD. Asthma involves airway inflammation and increased hyperresponsiveness in people. Albuterol is not a preventive agent. It only produces symptomatic relief by producing immediate bronchodilation. Therefore, it cannot reduce the number of attacks in the asthma. In people with underlying inflammation, an anti-inflammatory agent should be used. Albuterol is not a steroid. Instead, it can be used along with the steroids to reduce the inflammation. Albuterol is a rescue medication that produces quick relief from the bronchospasm, while corticosteroids are controller medications that produce anti-inflammatory actions and they can reduce the recurring attacks of asthma. Therefore, they can produce a long-term control on the induction of asthma. However, both of these agents are required to produce a significant treatment for the asthma. Corticosteroids like budesonide, fluticasone, and mometasone can be used to reduce inflammation. Generally, albuterol can be combined with corticosteroids like budesonide in a single inhaler. Albuterol can produce hypokalemia, where the serum potassium levels in the blood 
may be reduced to less than 3.5 millimoles per liter. This decreased potassium level in the body can affect your skeletal muscles and the function of your heart. Significant hypokalemia produces muscle weakness, fatigue, and muscle cramps. Even low potassium levels can disturb the heart rhythm, leading to irregular heartbeats. Therefore, overuse of albuterol should be avoided. Albuterol is a beta-2 adrenergic receptor agonist. It can stimulate the sodium-potassium ATPase pump, which is responsible for moving potassium ions from the extracellular space into the cells. With higher levels of albuterol reaching into the body, these pumps are more activated, leading to decreased serum potassium levels. This results in a transient hypokalemia, a temporary decrease in the concentration of potassium in the blood. Therefore, with frequent usage, the potassium levels are reduced. Albuterol can also trigger the release of insulin. Although the insulin secretion may not lead to hypoglycemia, it may reduce those potassium levels, leading to hypokalemia. The hypokalemia produced by albuterol can be further enhanced by the use of a few other medications that reduce potassium levels in the body, particularly non-potassium-sparing diuretics like loop diuretics or thiazide diuretics can reduce the potassium levels by increasing its excretion in the urine. Therefore, when you're taking loop diuretics like furosemide or thiazide diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide, the potassium loss may be significant. In such conditions, you may observe the symptoms of hypokalemia or a change in the ECG. However, this effect can be observed when you're taking albuterol at a dose more than recommended. Never use other short-acting sympathomimetic bronchodilators along with albuterol. This may produce significant adverse effects on your heart due to overstimulation of the sympathetic system. When you're taking other drugs, try to avoid additional adrenergic drugs. If you're using tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline or nortriptyline or MAO inhibitors like trenylcypromin or isocarboxazid, they may interact with albuterol. These medications can stimulate the sympathetic system. So when they are taken along with albuterol, their combination can produce a significant effect on stimulation of the adrenergic system, leading to adverse effects on the heart. Even if you have discontinued these medications, you should use albuterol with caution within two weeks. Because these medications can still produce their effects after two weeks of stopping the dose. MAO inhibitors can inhibit the metabolism of monoamines like norepinephrine. TCAs can reduce the uptake of norepinephrine into the nerve terminal, thereby increasing its transmission in the CNS. Therefore, these two groups of medications can increase the adrenergic stimulation when they are combined with albuterol. What are the side effects of this medication? One of the common side effects produced by this medication is the development of tremors. Albuterol activates the beta-2 adrenergic receptors. These beta-2 receptors are located on the blood vessel, supplying the skeletal muscle. Albuterol can increase the cyclic amp levels and produce the relaxation of the smooth muscles. These beta-2 receptors are also found on the skeletal muscles. The elevated cyclic amp levels can produce a disturbance in the muscle contraction, leading to increased twitching response and muscle tension. This may result in the involuntary rhythmic contractions leading to tremors in the people. In the children, albuterol can produce insomnia and nervousness. Other side effects like headache and dizziness can also be observed. It can also produce some nasal or throat irritation and muscle pains. When it is used in children, it may result in epistaxis, leading to nasal bleeding. Dry mouth, constipation, excessive sweating, and increasing the appetite are also commonly observed. How is it given? Albuterol is available in different dosage forms. It is available as meter dose inhalers, tablets, and syrup, as well as a solution for nebulization. Albuterol is available as an aerosol, as in the meter dose inhalers. These are the devices that release the medication at a specific dose with each actuation. Each puff of this aerosol releases 90 micrograms of the albuterol, which is equivalent to 108 micrograms of the albuterol sulfate. It's also available as a powder meter dose inhaler. A powder meter dose inhaler with an electronic module is also available. Albuterol can be used for treating the bronchospasm. Two puffs can be inhaled every four to six hours. It can also be used for exercise-induced bronchospasm. Before using the meter dose inhaler, you have to prime the inhaler. Release at least four test sprays into the air away from the face. You have to shake this container well before use. Before inhalation, breathe out fully through the mouth. Place the mouthpiece into the mouth, holding the inhaler in the upright position. Close your lips around it. Albuterol should be breathed deeply and slowly. 
Hold your breath for less than 10 seconds before breathing out. That's all about albuterol. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned and keep watching.